Hi, I'm Martin Adams, and I'm going to show you how to make papercrete, an incredibly easy to make and versatile building material made from recycled paper, Portland cement, and water. So, what can you do with papercrete? This pink building is actually made from papercrete blocks. The outside is hot, and the inside is always cool, because papercrete is an incredible insulator. These are papercrete blocks and they weigh only three and a half pounds each, so they're easier to handle than concrete. So how did we make these? Well, this is what they look like about a week ago, just after we poured them into molds using a homemade tow mixer. So what's a tow mixer? A tow mixer is basically a big food processor that you can tow behind your car to mix papercrete. We made this one, and you can make one too. As the wheels on this mixer turn, a large blade inside chops up paper and mixes it with water and cement, making fibrous cement, or papercrete. I'm going to show you what a, uh, a papercrete batch making session looks like. First, we close the spout with bungee cord so it doesn't leak. Next, we fill the tank two-thirds full of water from a large elevated water tank or a big water hose. Now we dig out some paper from our paper stash of old newspapers, tax returns, bills, old letters, anything that we can recycle. We stuff them into boxes and put them on a scale. We're going to weigh them. For one batch, we'll need 60 pounds of paper. Now we jam the paper by the fistful into the tank of water. The sooner it gets wet, the easier it will be to chop up. After the paper is in the water, open a bag of Portland cement and dump the contents over the paper. There's no photo of this, but you get the idea. Now cover the tank and go for a slow drive. Two minutes at five miles per hour is perfect because the blade is very fast and it's very powerful. It's hard to believe that very soon the stuff inside the tank is going to look like this. This is what the papercrete looks like when it's churning. It's done when all the pieces of paper are shredded into pulp. Now lay some plastic or cardboard or even layers of newspaper on the ground and place the gang molds over them in a line. We're going to drive over them. Now as the tow mixer reaches the first mold, we stop and release the spout to let the papercrete mix flow out. And you drive slowly while dispensing to the others. After the forms are full, then you can trowel it flat. One person drives while the other person pours and trowels. When one gang mold is full and trowelled, then we do the next until all the, uh, the mix is used up. Uh, we wait 20 minutes to pick up the molds because excess water is going to drain out and the blocks will sink a little bit. This draining and settling is necessary to get a straight block. Otherwise, if the forms are taken away too quickly, the mix will slump and the sides will be rounded. So, 60 pounds of paper and one bag of cement produce 42 blocks. They're each about 12 inches by 8 inches by 5 inches, and each gang mold makes 14 blocks. After the blocks cure, which is three days, we stand them on edge so they dry completely. It takes about a week in the summer's heat. And there you have it. We made a batch in about 20 minutes, so with constant production, we could make kind of about 126 blocks per hour. That's two blocks per minute, but really huffing. Here is uh, Mike McCain. He's a great papercrete pioneer, and uh, he showed us his tow mixer. Here he's making papercrete in Mexico. The blade in the bottom was just a section of fence post bolted on, but it worked great. The exit, um, uh, or where the um, the papercrete comes out of this mixer was sort of like a sluice gate, basically a flat piece of metal that slides out and lets the, and lets the mix fall through a hole. Uh, note below this gate in the picture you'll see a hammer that Mike had to use to bang on this thing to get it to come out. So that prompted me to uh, invent something else for ours. And uh, his mixer actually worked great. Mike gave us a demo right on the spot. He mixed up a batch of papercrete for the buildings that he was constructing down there in Mexico. I was wondering the whole time whether we were going to get blocks like this out of a mixer like that. Instead of a cover, Mike bolted an old tire on the rim of the tank to catch the splatter and it worked fine. 
after Mike filled his mixer, he took a drive over to his um, dumping grounds where he lets the stuff out on the ground uh, between forms. Note the leaking gate leaving a trail on the road. Well, we had seen enough to make our own, so with some changes and improvements, we got started. Here are the parts. Upper left, you'll see a 160 gallon stock tank. And then in the middle, you see the black differential, which you can get from a automobile scrap yard. And then some steel pipe, square steel pipe, about one and a half inches on the side. And some plywood. So here's a real quick tour of our construction. Uh, we cut the steel pipe for the support frame and also for the tow bar. The tow bar was welded on first, right to the belly of the differential, after draining the oil, of course. Then two more uh, sections of pipe were welded to the axles and where they meet on the tow bar. Ta-da! Looking good! This is the basic frame that will support the tank over the skyward facing differential. Basically, it's the, it's the part that used to be bolted to the drive shaft. The blade is going to be bolted onto that same place. Let's see, the platform should come to right about here. So we cut the plywood platform, which supports the tank. It's about four feet square. And now we cut the hole where the differential will stick up into the tank through the platform. And after several small cuts, it fits nicely on the supports and over the differential. I thought that the sliding metal gate on Mike's mixer was a little inconvenient, so I thought up an alternative. I call it an elephant's trunk. And here I'm riveting the inner tube trunk like spout to the tank's bottom. Fast forwarding a little to the finished product. This is the um, elephant trunk when it's uh, ready for use. And that elephant trunk actually made it possible to direct the mix into forms and produce uniform blocks like this. And now we weld a few bolts to the supports to hold the tank on. We welded on four bolts, two on one support and two on the other. And after making holes in the bottom of the tank, we bolt the tank on. And then, finally, we seal the gap between the differential and the tank, but not with this stuff. It came out. Use Bondo. This is what the elephant's trunk spout looks like from the inside. The lawnmower blade probably didn't need sharpening, but what the heck, it cuts better when it's sharp. And now for the test. We toss in some water from a kiddie's pool. And now a bit of paper. Well, maybe a bit more than that. How about that stack of Playboys over there? And maybe those Garfield comics? And now we go for a short drive. This was our first and last test without a cover. It splashes and it splatters. I was standing on the plywood and I really got it. We made a simple one long block mold and drove over it, dispensing mix with the spout. It worked great and I cut this block later with a machete to make individual blocks. We've still got half a batch, so we let the first pour settle, move the mold, and then get ready for the next trip. The bottom of the mixer is flat, and so the last bit of mix has to be pushed to the hole so it falls out. Here we're finishing the batch. All of the next batches we made using three gang molds, which I made. One batch exactly fills all three molds in one pass, 42 blocks. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this short presentation informative and enjoyable. There is, or will be soon, an instructional video showing step-by-step -step how to make the tow mixer that we made at makepapercrete.com Your feedback and comments are welcome. Thank you.